Oh, yeah. It's Monday. Just like that. January 18th. A.K.A. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 2020. I'm your host, Alex. Your intern on the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Powered by Incorporating Associates. And... Just the starts of the week. For some, it's a slow start because they might have the day off. They might have a reduced day. They may be out of school. They might not be as busy or think they don't need to be as productive as usual. But in corporate, it's business as usual. Every day is the same fucking thing. Even on Sundays. Even on the Sabbath. Because business never sleeps. You might not be transacting every waking moment. But as long as you're awake, as long as you're aware, your business shouldn't sleep. You got to mind your business. You got to take care and handle your shit. I think Ben Franklin said that. The, the the mind your business part, not the handle your shit part. That was that was me. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the first uh, coin to be minted in the United States. If I'm not mistaken, like the first official coin that was proposed to be minted for the U.S. Um, as currency. Stop saying um. Was. Proposed by Mr. Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. And on it was the inscription, Mind Your Business. Now, I suppose I could go and find the root word for business, what its origin is, what the fuck it even has to do with politics and society at large, but... I suppose if you weren't handling your business, that shit is getting handled for you. And more than likely, not the way you might want it or not the way you expected it. Because that entails a certain amount of trust and confidence. But that's not the the theme. Not the, uh, what was it? Not the topic for this one. I wanted to touch on uh, the previous episodes just very briefly. Um, If this is the first one you're catching, my name is Alex. I'm the intern. Forever your intern. You can think of me as your associate. You can think of me as the friend you never had. As the person you can come to maybe once or twice a week and catch an hour of just corporate catharsis where I go over um, just ruminations that come across my desk between myself and partners ideas that get talked out uh, points that might not even be mine but I believe them to be worthy of mention maybe they should be aired out put out there into the universe so that not only listeners uh, but researchers and analysts using AI and machine learning can transcribe this and come up with something better. Come up with something better. (laughs) Come up with something better. Because if I have to do it all myself it's going to be fucking messy. It's going to take a lot of <clears throat> learning experiences and I just don't have the time I'm already committed I've um, compromised my time I've committed my time devoted it to other trades and um, other crafts if you will and that's part of what this project is the Corporate Cowboy Podcast um, I somewhat volunteered having the cleanest record in my particular crew. 
I've become the voice, not so much the face. I might be camera shy, even if I'm photogenic. <laughs> I'm fucking kidding with you. How would I know? But yeah, camera shy, not gun shy. I do enjoy touching on taboo topics, topics of uh, conflict, topics of contention, contentious topics. And I like, I enjoy sinking people into tumultuous thought, into a tumultuous thinking process, because that's that's how you forge strong minds. I mean, the only other way is um, trial by fire, like actual trauma. And few people come out of that the way you really want them to. So I feel like spoken word is the best way to educate. If you can learn from my mistakes, if you can learn from my successes and those of others around me, my associates, however they come to, um, to let me know, by all means, come away better, come away a better person because of me, come away a better corporate cowboy, just come away a corporate cowboy, that's the whole point of this podcast, and listening me, listening me, (laughs) listening to me, hearing me, hearing me out, in my process, in my journey to become an aspiring professional. Notice how I said to become an aspiring professional. I've always been an aspiring professional since I was younger. I've aspired to be professional. And I know that that's just the fucking, the goal is is the journey. You feel me? The destination is the grave. But the goal is the journey. And the successes, I hope, are many more than the failures, but again, what we count as successes and failures might differ from person to person, from professional to professional, from learning objectives. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got one for this. From, (laughs) from, is it successful learning objectives? From, hold on, successful learning uh fuck yeah 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 hold on from some successive learning outcomes from successful learning outcomes to hold on successful learning outcomes to fruitful learning experiences that's right that's right because some might say that they lost or they took that L, but if they if they stepped away from it, um, still whole, still alive, you know, not missing an arm or a leg, whole, still relatively whole. I suppose I should include the mind in their their state of mind because if they stepped away from it, a broken person, you know, whatever whatever the experience was. Sorry, I didn't contextualize that as well as I thought of, as well as I think I should have. But if they step away from an experience of broken man, mentally broken, um, there are a few, there are a few things that can help a person in those straits. One of them being, of course, um, intensive therapy, just talking it out. Just talking it out, putting words, putting words to experience, putting words to to thoughts, because sometimes we we think or we have a deluge of thoughts and ideas that we can't put into words fast enough or we can't put into the right words to capture all meaning and that overwhelms some professionals i've seen some professionals crack i've seen i've seen them at their capacity 
and then break. And that's hard to witness. That really is hard to witness. And I'm sure I've been there before. I'm sure I've been there before. But I'll be honest, I don't recall the last time I shed a real tear. Wait, hold on. I think I do. I think I do remember the last time I shed a real tear. But I was intoxicated or something. Was I? No. Because, yeah, I mean, intoxication does lower your inhibitions. Your inhibitions. Inhibitions. Yeah, sorry. Uh, This podcast, if you can hear, is just... A um, an exercise. Every episode is an exercise. Every episode is an exercise in the skills, the social skills that I have, the vocal, the verbal skills that I have, the skills for logic and tact. Those are the recurring themes for the podcast and essentially for being an effective, an effective corporate cowboy. Because sometimes efficiency isn't everything. Sometimes efficiency is suspicious but effectiveness yo effective (laughs) effectiveness rarely rarely gets questioned but i get it if you can do something if you can do something right and do it quick you are both effective and efficient kudos more props to you if i could if i had you in front of me i'd dap you up and we'd be cool we'd be in business i would try to incorporate an associate. But that's the exercise of this podcast is to be able to speak clearer, pronounce my words, enunciate them, intone them. So you might hear me go through <clears throat> accents, levels of volume, even. And this is all for the sake of improving myself as as a chameleon, (laughs) as a corporate cowboy, as a corporate cowboy, I got to be able to get into the door. Once I'm into the, once I'm, I have to be able to get into the door. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to be able to get through the door because just having a foot in the door is suspicious. You have to be able to get through the door over the threshold from being from moving <laughs> moving from the outside you see why do i get frustrated take a breath analyze your voice and be aware that moving from the outside inside is efficiency i need to be efficient again it's it's how you it's how you value efficiency I don't, I don't value staying outside or having a foot in the door. I value being inside. When you're inside, then you can be effective. Of course, there are effective means of getting inside. But I think if, <laughs> I, in, in that sense, I feel like that's constrained by time. That's... That's, um, hold on, hold on. Conditioned? Is that conditioned by the passage of time? It's conditioned by the passage of time. And how effective you are in getting inside from the outside, it constitutes efficiency. That's what constitutes efficiency to me. And again, I'm layering... Stop saying again. How about that? I'm layering this in the context of being a corporate cowboy. You want to work with organizations or work in organizations, you have to be familiar with getting in to organizations. And that's going to be through the rank and file of the employees, even the executives. That includes the executives. They are, by contract, employees. Even the president is an employee. They can be hired and fired. So a, corp, so a corporate cowboy. So a corporate cowboy. Needs to balance effectiveness and efficiency in order to create the most 
change for the better. If you can do them both, again, more props to you. I'm honestly working on, yeah, on both of them. But efficiency for me now, it's lifetime. It's lifetime. That's, I'll be honest, that's why I'm not, that's why I'm not laying it on as hard. Efficiency. Why? Because personally, personally and professionally, Alex, your intern, yours truly, has taken on the commitment to remain an aspiring professional for life. Is that efficient? Again, that's for you to decide. I'm just not considering it because it'll happen in its own time. But effectiveness, effectiveness, that's another ball game. That's another fucking dice game. <clears throat> and it's not so much having to do with luck. It has to do with the words you employ. It has to do with the logic and tact you've developed and are able to implement or deploy. And that's what this podcast is for, is to be able to proof my logic, proof my tact, have it sound grounded. So it's going to call for me to slow down, be calm, remain calm, remain collected, remain cool. And in doing so, be effective. Because calm, collected, and cool doesn't automatically translate into efficiency. Similar to how mostly folks in the forces, I guess that's where I picked this one up, but similar to how uh, the the adage that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. It's similar to that. It's similar to that. But in the context of actually being on the battlefield, who can attest to wanting to move slow? At that point, you're just being effective. You're not trying to be you're not thinking efficiency. You're thinking effectiveness. You're, your thinking process has, has um, fractionalized. Not fractured. I mean, it hasn't fractured. If you're still in the fight, it hasn't fractured until you break. But it's, it's maybe fractionalized where you're not thinking in terms of... of moving slow you're not thinking in terms of being smooth you're thinking in terms of being effective and that's all one flowing motion Real talk, I forgot what the original topic of this um, title was going to be, of this episode. I forgot what the title for this episode was going to be, but that's cool. I mean, I just came on to to vent and air my, air my shifts, air, you know, I guess debrief the last couple of days. What, um, what's been going on? And uh, what's what's happening? What's occurring? Gotta drink some water. It's 
stay hydrated, folks. It's only Monday, so stay hydrated. While we're online, you'll see many of the comments that we leave or the posts that we leave. We've always uh, we use uh, the wine emoji, but that doesn't mean that we are fucking alcoholics <clears throat> and grape fiends. No, no. Water, first and foremost, is water. Because water keeps... Water keeps you afloat. <laughs> Get it? Water is what keeps you afloat. Ah, I remember. So I just wanted to uh, quickly touch on... Uh, the past couple of episodes, I know one of them was even about like selling drugs and like not even that deep. I was just touching on hustling and um, I don't want folks to get the wrong idea if you came here and think you're going to learn how to cut up. <laughs> uh, if you came here thinking that you're going to learn how to um, buy buy and supply buy and sell no like if you came in here thinking you're gonna learn how to weigh and package product no the point was the hustling the leg work or the mouth work the leg work of the mouthpiece pretty much the vocal work the mental work Hold on, hold on. Not it's not emotional labor. That's that's critical theory. That's fucking sociological theory coming to get me. Not emotional labor. Hold on. I suppose it might be. I suppose it might be. I'm in my mind. I'm trying to tie it in without sounding like a fucking academic square especially recently graduated from a postmodern liberal institution mm. so a lot of what i'm doing is tying tying back liberal themes into what some folks might consider natural law or the street code. <laughs> it's a little hard to put into words. Again, I don't want to think I'm getting overwhelmed, but it's a lot of ideas to put into words. It requires some time that I don't want to fill this episode with silence while I sift through words in my head in order to put down just on a recording. I guess I can write them down later, though I have plenty of other things to read and write I have things to consult and um, I've got added work before I could really sit down and write out a manuscript or a thesis I remember when I was younger when I first entered education yeah I I definitely did want to take up uh, uh, a master's program and wanted to write a thesis out i even started it i should probably go pull it up and read it for you so you know what it is uh the future looks like because this shit is the future like i already see bits and pieces coming into fruition but it's all happening in a very centralized manner where it's being delivered to society in a very drip like fashion and it's fucking retarded. <laughs> Literally, the literal definition of the word, retarded. It's just slowed down when the thesis I have actually uh, typed up has, has the potential to realize real-time innovation and not just gatekeep it like academia was prone to do which is kind of what drove me away from the master's program to be honest 
That's why I didn't choose to pursue it, even though I wanted to innovate the institution of academia, the institution of education. Uh, my experience inside of it pretty much told me to keep my mouth shut. Keep my mouth shut. Don't be different. Don't stand out or you won't get out alive. But now that I'm out and um, I've applied to graduate school, I'm in graduate school now. A different one than I imagined, but still one to continue learning and developing myself. Um, in this case, more so as a weapon and not as an educator, as I dreamed in the past. Now I'm going to be a fucking bullet with no name, a gun with no serial number. <laughs> Oh, shit. But it'll be fun, though. It'll be fun. You just have to think it'll be fun and have fun doing it, even if it's painful. It requires it requires you to eat salt and imagine it's sugar. <laughs> this uh, episode's sponsor is... Again, not corporate because I don't have any corporate sponsors as of yet. If you would like to get in touch, by all means, uh, you can write to us or you can drop us a DM on Instagram. If you find the email address, you can email us there. It's not checked as often, but it is checked, rest assured. On Instagram... On Instagram, it's incorporating.associates underscore IA. Uh, again, that's incorporating.associates underscore IA. And you can write to us. You can send us uh, questionable items, but make sure that they're not outright illicit. Don't allude to it. Just send the shit to P.O. Box. 3372 Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova, California, 95742. Attention, Alex at Incorporating Associates. Hmm. Today's sponsor is um hold on hold on did i say pencils yet because i i really want to do uh the brain today's sponsor is the human brain yeah today's sponsor is the human brain complicated as it might be it is very simple to behold Complicated though it might be, the human brain is simple to behold. And by behold, I mean like out in the open. Like even, okay, so <laughs> I got to break that shit down, huh? So even though it might be complicated inside of your skull while it's working and operating your meat sack your your corporal vessel it's simple to behold just just smashing the cranium uh, essentially i didn't want to overdo that so i just went straight for it i don't want to say like i don't want it to become so graphic more graphic than it needed to be to get the point across so i let your human brain Imagine it for me and paint that picture I otherwise don't need to. <laughs> the human brain, a work of art. A work of art. And you can also make art with it. Imagine that. That was one of my catchphrases. I feel like everybody had a catchphrase when they were younger or when they were growing up. Um, I had a friend who's... Um, 
catchphrase was, should I bring my gun? <laughs> that was his catchphrase. That was his catchphrase. And um, mine was uh, mine was a little faggy one, dude. Mine was a little gay one. Um, I think one of mine was, that's not true. How could you say that? And looking back in retrospect, I could already tell that that kid, young Alex, young Alex, fucking little prepubescent Alex almost, that kid was going to grow to be a, a manipulator. And um, my friend, I think we were like best friends at the time, inseparable at least, I don't know what they went on to be, uh, but even even at that young age, we're already running around talking about guns and knives. <laughs> it was, should I bring my gun? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking about bringing that back, though. <clears throat> I know guns have become fucking taboo. In everyday discourse, but not on this podcast. This podcast, we can talk about damn near anything and everything. And the more uh, audience we get, I feel we can broaden those topics. But for now, I'm going to keep it consistent. I'm not going to go off of the rails. Um, Excuse the burp, mind you. I know that's random. That's things we do in person when we're fraternizing fraternizing when we're fraternizing and as much as i'd like to think that this podcast will be a professional vestige of my personal self i've got to come to terms with the fact that uh studies show people who use profanity tend to be more trustworthy so based on that Yes, you'll catch me cursing. Yes, you'll catch me being a fucking casual. You'll catch me being civilian. You'll catch me being a lay person. And that's just for the sake of being emphatic. Being emphatic? It's just it's just for the sake of Yeah, being emphatic, providing emphasis in what I'm saying. (laughs) Like, if... It it definitely does... It definitely does depend on the context. Say, me. I look like a square, I guess. If I reached into my pocket and I said... Or I reached, you know, into my jacket or whatever and said... You could get hurt, or I'm going to hurt you, or I'm going to shoot you. How how the degree to which you believe me depends on the context of the situation in which I say those things. Now, if I lace it with some profanity, and um, because profanity tends to... Uh, draw more attention, draw more attention. So even in public, even in public, I could say, I could find a way. And I used to be good at shit like this. I mean, I'm not, I'm not boasting. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not bragging, but I used to be. Because you don't know, maybe I got better. I used to be pretty decent at talking about illicit activity at conducting criminal activity in public and not drawing attention. It's a skill. It's a skill. Some folks get jumpy, uneasy, skittish, start looking around, just fucking drawing heat to the scene. It's drawing eyeballs and those eyeballs bring heat. I used to be pretty good at avoiding it. Even misdirection. Even misdirecting the attention. So in that scenario, 
I probably could say, I probably could have said out loud, I'm going to shoot you. And folks at the table, I don't know, at the table next to us would have never fucking turned. (laughs) Unless I said, I'm going to fucking shoot you. Then you might start drawing some eyes. And that all depends on the tone in which you use it, the intonation, how how you pronounce it, the the passion you you invoke into those words to find exactly what you mean. But there are times when you have to be dispassionate and it depends on the situation with whom you are speaking with. And they must know you enough. They must know you enough to know that you aren't joking. And how, how else do you have them realize you aren't joking if not through... Hold on, hold on. How else do you real how how else do you have them realize you aren't joking if not through reputation if not through prior experience because then they could take just a simple phrase like you're going to get hurt as a legitimate threat <laughs> Because you're going to get hurt. Sounds like nothing. Sounds like nothing. Or like... Or there's those instances where like some really rat motherfuckers will just be like, oh, be careful. Or something like that. And um, you don't know that they're going to stab you in the fucking back. Which is why like if I'm going to... If I'm going to threaten anyone. If I'm going to intimidate anyone. It's going to be, it's going to be face to face. It's not going to be through double speak. It's going to be an upfront warning. going to tell them. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. It's just a matter of principle. It's a matter of principle. It's a matter of principalities. It's good and there's bad. You choose to do wrong. You choose to be bad. You're going to get hurt. (laughs) Simple. Straightforward. Yes, I totally agree. That there are bad people out there who are better at inflicting inflicting pain and um, doing it under the flag of being evil. But pain in itself is just a tool. Good people use pain too. Pain in itself is just a tool and it's not proprietary to evil people, to bad men, bad women. It's not proprietary to just them. It's a tool. That's all. Bad people, I guess in the ordinary understanding, in the common understanding, bad people are just really shitty at every other form of communication that pain to them is the most efficient and effective way of getting what they want. <clears throat> there, there. So I walked you, I walked you all the way up until the point where I'm telling you now, and this project, Corporate Cowboys Podcast, pretty much proves that I'm I'm trying. I'm trying very hard not to be a bad person. I'm trying to be a good person. Why? Because being able to air out my ideas, air out my frustrations, air out my contemplations, my deliberations, my imagination, my creativity. Being able to air those out in a cathartic manner keeps me from breaking. (laughs) Keeps me from breaking. Keeps me from acting out in, in an evil fashion. Keeps me from from distorting that energy that could be used for good, for a goodwill, that could be used for betterment, could be used for improving, could be used for innovation, in the name of innovation. 
could be used to being a better corporate cowboy, it keeps me in the right. And constantly being better. That's all. That's what I'm striving for. Uh, that intro went on longer than uh, than I thought. You see that? I made half an hour out of like fucking five minutes. I made half an hour out of fucking five minutes. That's some corporate cowboy shit. Some folks would say not efficient. But me, I give a fuck. Because I'm taking my whole life. I'm not taking my life. I'm taking my whole life. I'm going to look good doing it. And I'm going to do it right. That's effective. (laughs) I'm working on being effective, folks. Yes, I understand there are deadlines, there are time constraints. And yes, in my profession, there are plenty of those. And being able to work within bounds is a skill, definitely. But when you first approach a challenge and condition, hold on, hold on, hold on, and uh, premise it, I suppose, premise it on encompassing your entire life, you can't move ahead until you work through the issues and the problems that will bring you success. That's going to make you more effective. That's going to make you more effective. If you have a project... That's due by this Friday. Today's Monday. You have four days to work. Doesn't matter how you how you view it. It's fucking five days. No, Monday's already burnt. Friday's already burnt. Psych, you got fucking three days now. <laughs> you got fucking three days. If not, you die by Friday. I don't know why I always um, premised things with do or die. I know that's so cliche of what the 80s or the 90s so fucking cliche but it works damn it works and it gets results it's effective it's effective and as far as efficiency is concerned it's outright efficient the most (laughs) the most efficient because if it doesn't get done there are literally bodies that will be accounted. There are literally names and faces <laughs> who are responsible for it. That's efficient. That's efficiency. So if you premise it with the idea that come Friday you will die, and it's again, it's hard to put yourself into that mind state if you've never. Um, hold on. Don't say too much. Don't talk too reckless. It's hard to put yourself in that state of mind if you've never faced a relatable pressure if you've never faced um related pressure related there you go not relatable don't need you to don't need you to relate to me just relate to the to the pressure (laughs) fucking corporate cowboys don't want to ever be implicated but always want to be involved you don't have to relate to me you just have to relate to the pressure we're just we're the vehicles and the messenger. We're the vehicles and the messenger. That's fucking cute, man. But the message, the message is do or die. Always. Come Friday, if you don't have it, you're going to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be hurt. You're going to be hurt. Or it's going to hurt. Just something something square, something light, you know? And they know who it's coming from because I'm saying it to them to their fucking face. They know where it's coming from, but they know it's them who is going to suffer. It's a logical finality. Logical finality. Depending on the context of whatever agreement we might have had, it might not even get physical. It doesn't have to get physical. But as far as getting hurt, there's a multitude of ways. And they don't all involve pain. They don't all involve pain. That makes me a better person. That makes me the corporate cowboy I wish to be. 
that makes me that makes me an innovator, man. That makes me that makes me not a bad person. That makes me not evil. And that's just if we have to bring it back to principalities, which I don't have a lot of use for. I've shaken hands with some very greasy folks. But but I always had gloves on, so it's whatever. Uh, and now that's going to get even more important. Um, all right, never mind. I already had a sponsor for gloves. Gloves are going to get more important. I know masks are in. Ooh, masks are so hot right now. But gloves are going to become more and more important. Um, as folks move into the future, they want to touch less and less things. And uh, that has ow, that has some sociological implications. That has some psychological implications, too, of just folks wanting to distance themselves. It started with phones first. So people, so um, individuals call each other less and less and yet call organizations more and more which uh, you know has fueled this industry for customer service and and uh, account service. But uh, wearing gloves, I feel it's going to add another layer of <laughs> of protection. <laughs> That's not even a pun, dude. That's not even a fucking pun. It's a it's wordplay. It's uh, I forget the concept for it. Just adding gloves will be another layer of protection. Like it's a, well, like there's a literal sense and then there's the figurative sense that I, that I meant, but they both coincide perfectly, mind you. Yeah, it's a little too late to get into the topic that I wanted to, and it had to do with innovation it had to do with education i'm sorry yeah a lot of uh, a lot of these will have to do with uh innovation like i mentioned and then it's inverse corruption it's inverse and opposite corruption corruption but innovation is where it's at folks you want to talk about selling drugs you you want to talk about dope you want to talk about having dope. You want to talk about having a line on some A1? Innovation, baby. Innovation. Because uh, good ideas, good ideas are everywhere. Good ideas are everywhere. It's like having, uh, it's like having drugs. I used to run around... Um, should I say selling drugs? Let's just say I was in the game, right? And um, it got to a point where I would surround myself with uh, those individuals who had the same quality, if not better, than what I carried. And it became difficult to sell because somebody already had it or had something better. And uh, those instances required me to innovate and in how to capture a different market. But it did give me some insight into the fact that if you associate with individuals who have good ideas like yourself, good ideas or better ideas like yourself, it's different than selling drugs. And so when you sell drugs, you want to distance yourself from them. You don't want to associate as closely. But ideas, because they're not illegal, they're not illicit, you actually want to come together and incorporate associates in order to bind your ideas, in order to merge them, and make a product that's unrivaled, 
you might say the best on the market, but I always say it's just better because once you put the label of the best, you're just asking to get <laughs> shot down. You're just asking to get... You're just asking for attention if you claim to be the best. You always want to be better. You don't want to say better than the best either. That's just being a loud mouth. It's a waste of words. It's a waste of talent. And if you go out that way, you will you'll die. You'll die. Um, you'll die as, hold on, not narcissistic. There's a word for it. Not a, not a douchebag. So, okay, I guess, I guess essentially I could, I could reason, I could reason, I could make an argument for it because I've been called a douchebag before, but I'm still standing. <laughs> um, but I knew I was probably in the wrong. So yeah, I can attest to that. I can concede that fact. But in coming together, you form... An even better product. It's even better. That's the whole point of being better. I haven't seen too many organizations pull on that. Pull ahead on being better. Folks always want to be the best. And in doing so, they get their, their service or their quality is uh, stuck in a rut. So even though they've been, you know long-standing the organization has history it's marred by ineptitude <laughs> it's marred by just shit service shit products but a big name Ooh, wow Ooh, wow and yet products that are better those that um that are able to make a a little name for themselves before they get bought up or sold out or something Folks that are better um, have have a deeper reach, maybe not as wide, but a deeper reach. Why? Because their focus is on being better, not the best. When you want to be known as the best, you want widespread reach. You want broad reach. But when you want to be better, that's it takes <laughs> it takes being effective. It takes being effective, not just efficient. Rewind that. It takes being effective, not only efficient. You want to get the word across to as many folks as you can that you're the best. You're going to want to do so in an, e an efficient manner. But if you do so, being effective, it will get there eventually, over a lifetime even. And on the way there, you don't know. You could be innovating the whole way there. So it's maybe not even just you pushing the cart. It's someone else pulling the cart. It's, it's other folks supporting the cart, adding better wheels, better bearings, new hubs, all that. So again, it's not just you. But to do so, you have to be effective. Because if you claim to be the best, who's going to want to fucking help you? <laughs> and there are those who say, I want to work with the best. I feel like the majority of them mean you, they just want to be better. They only want to be better. And in turn, they'll be known as the best. But if they want to come right out of the gate and say, yo, this is the best or I'm the best, it's just calling for a target on their back. And um, again, I'm not going to I'm not going to tie that to the street. I'm not going to tie that to the streets of selling drugs or anything. I mean, folks who claim they were the best drug dealers got popped all the time. Folks who were known to have the best dope, they got popped all the time too. Just needed to have, just needed to be better. Just needed to be a better salesman, have slightly better product, better packaging. You just want to be better. And it sounds so ridiculous now that I talk about it. Like, being, being a better drug dealer, there are only so many avenues you can take before 
you just can't innovate selling drugs. I mean, look at, look at, look at um, prescription drugs right now. You can't, there's limited avenues you can take before everyone in society is taking them. There are limited avenues you can take before it's fucking mandated that you take drugs, pretty much. And at that point, that's not innovation. That's just, that's just institutionalized. That's just institutionalization. And it doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you the best, even. It just makes you a part of the system. It just blends you into the wall. It just <laughs> blends you. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to bring this back to the very beginning. Watch this. It just blends you into the infrastructure, into the wall, where motherfuckers like myself can take it upon themselves to be effective once they get through the door. That's some corporate cowboy shit. That's that corporate cowboy shit. Well, to the beginning of the week, it always feels like the beginning of the week. It always feels like the end of the week. It always feels like a Friday. It always feels like a Monday. This shit is business as usual. This shit is business as usual. I appreciate you taking the time just a little bit out of your day, catching up with me. You want to come back next time? It'll be um, something similar, but different. <laughs> there used to be a... Dang, I, I had that catchphrase for a while too. I had to say something like that. <laughs> and whenever I employed that one, that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. That was one when I was uh, slightly older, though. I caught on to catchphrases uh, when I was younger. And um, and again, my friend told me about them. And before that, I didn't really think like, I don't know, maybe it's like an OCD or some functional autism or some shit. I might be on the spectrum, who the fuck knows. But I don't enjoy repetition. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. Um, reiteration I can do and yeah I'll catch myself repeating things and when I do I try to stop myself and say I've already said this but I understand in the context of this project in the context of this undertaking the corporate cowboys podcast it might be okay to repeat um and look at the way society operates. Look at the way government operates. They want you to believe something. They just repeat it many, many times until it's drilled in. I'm not, I'm not a fan of, of nagging. <laughs> That's what that is. That's what I think it is. I'm not a fan of nagging. I'm a fan of saying it once and getting it right. I'm a fan of doing it again and getting twice the amount. That's it. I want to keep getting better. I need to innovate. It's some corporate cowboy shit. It's not a cry for help. It's not a call for help. I don't I don't need help. I don't fucking need it. I want it. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn, that reminds me of this one this one cat. That reminds me of this one cat who um uh, we were just having, we were in deep conversation, we're talking about some shit, um, about putting in work and all, and what the state of mind, what, what thoughts go through a, per, a person's head, what thoughts go through a person's head in that instance where, um, you know, they're getting down. And it's not something that, it's, <laughs> how do they phrase it? I don't, I don't even want to do this. <laughs> I don't even want to do it. Because, the, you know, they're human. At the end of the day, corporate cowboys are humans too, right? And this guy was a corporate cowboy to the heart. A 
corporate cowboy to the soul. I don't know where he is. If I, if I meet him, if I reach up out to him, it's going to be for some serious shit. Only because I know how serious it can get. They're busy. They have a life. They have a life. If I'm going to pull them out of their life and bring them into the mix, it's going to be something heavy. It's going to be something serious. But they said, and I quote, I don't even want to do this. When you're, when you're about to engage, when you're, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I don't want to parse words, but again, I don't want to say exactly what they said because there could be some, some third party incrimination. I don't even want to do it, quote, I don't even want to do it. But in that instance, I need to do it. In that instant, I need to do it. So I want to do it. <laughs> and I think what they meant was like they have to they have to want it. It's it's essentially it's psyching oneself up before you know um, before before doing the hit, you know, for the sake of argument. Before doing a hit you're going to psych yourself up like, I don't even want to fucking do this. This shit is gut-wrenching. I don't even want to do this. Why am I here? Then you realize the mission. Then you realize the purpose. Then you realize what it comes down to is being better. Being right. Being good for the purpose of improvement of advancement and you have to want it you have to want it like if you can't yeah like if you can't talk yourself into it you're just not gonna do it right you could be right outside of the door gun in hand again if you're doing this hit you could be right outside of the door gun in hand and you're fucking i don't know talking to yourself praying who the fuck fucking wasting time <laughs> not being efficient <laughs> or you can want it like you need it kicking the fucking door and get to work <laughs>